Hi there, Mr. Automation is back um, with a movie on how to run uh, SSH commands from PowerShell and specifically on the request of a viewer. He asked me, can you write some code or demonstrate the concept that you can run uh, commands on a network device? And a network device basically also listens on SSH, right? So you can set up a session. I'm not assuming you're using Telnet there. so. Uh, I assume you can set up an SSA session to that network device and from there run commands. So this demo is uh, a demonstration how to do that. Um, let me share my screen. <coughs> yes, perfect. Yeah, there are some requirements. I'll size my screen up like this for now. I'm using, as you can see here down, I'll do it again. I'm using 7.2 of PowerShell and you need at least for version seven, I think, or version 5.1 works as well. That's for really for Windows. Um, but that's quite important because what you need is this module, this posh SSH module. You can find it in the, in the repository. So let's try to find it. And we found it on the, in the PS gallery from Microsoft, we have there, uh, Posh module, you can also install that module if you don't have it yet. So then you install that module. And then if you have that module installed, you can actually use that module. And as you can see, you have some exported commands. There some commandlets we can use and those commandlets we will use throughout this demo. Um, yeah, that was the start. So let me comment this out. I'll leave it in for the demo. Let's cr just create a very simple script. I prepared a little bit. Um, First, let me show you what I did. I have a script which can deploy virtual machines for me and I deployed five Linux systems here. L, one, two, three, four, five, right? I deployed those. I will turn them all. And um, let's wait a little bit for that. Then I'll start a shell here, an Ubuntu shell. Yes, and then I'll SSH root root at uh, l1 uh, home dot local is it yeah uh, root yes uh, could not resolve the name probably it's still not switched on so hang on yes i can ping it now so now it is online let me clear the screen and now we run our uh command because uh yeah so we connect again to this guy and Perhaps I'll size this up as well. You can see that properly. So I'll, now I reach out to that virtual machine. And then it asks me for a password and I co constructed them and uh, these virtual machines with this password for the root. I'm not using that as default, but I just, for this demo, I enter that. And if you do now, uh, where am I? We will see that we're there and on the host name, we will also see that we remotely now on that Linux box, right? And if you don't believe it, Release that. Uh, hang on. Yes, uh, I thought that was on the Red Hat, but I'm on uh, on the CentOS, so uh, it's CentOS release, and there you see I have a CentOS 7.9 here, right? So we're remote on that server with the root. So I just prove you that we can actually connect. So uh, what we do in the next uh, is a simple script. First, I start the debugger and then explain a little bit what's happening. It's very simple. Um, run the code. Yeah, like this. First line is the password in plain text. This second line is, or the uh, number nine, is basically converting this plain text string to a secure based string. So that's a different type. It's type secure string. And this is of type normal string. You see just plain text uh, password. And uh, on the next line, line 10, we then construct a credential object and uh, of this type, PS credential. And it provides some arguments. The first argument is the username, that's root. And the second is the secure password. We just constructed that here. And with that information, we create the credential object inside of memory. Then on the next line, we set up an SSA session, session to a remote server, to this one. So imagine this is your uh, network box. 
and uh, we provide the credentials to connect to that device. So we do that now. So now we have an SSA session, you see that connected is true to that remote box. And over that session, we can now uh, run commands. And you, we do that by on line 12 by invoke SSH command and then specifying that session that we have created here. And then the command you want to run, I now do a simple directory listing, but you can even provide a very long script here if you want. Um, run this. Now uh, we capture the result in O. And if you look inside of O now, you will see that you get the host name back. So on which server it run, the output. So directory listing, you see the output of that here. And we can also tap inside of the dot output, right? It's just this property and see actually all the, you see, var, user, temp, sys, and such, proc, you see, the Linux file system. And then on line 15, we remove the session from memory again and the script is done. Um, very simple script. But let's advance this a little bit. So I'll comment this out like that. I'll leave it in for the demo. Remove this break as well. Now let's imagine we have a CSV file to work with, right? So I constructed the CSV file here with some headers, hostname, username, password, command to run. Hostname is the name we're connecting to. Username is the username we use to connect to that device. And for me, it's all root, but perhaps you have different uh, flavors there, different user accounts, I don't know. Perhaps different passwords, so you can provide the password per connection and then a command to run also per connection so here we do a directory listing on the second one you do an echo on the third one the host name and here we get the ip address and here we run a couple of commands even on that remote system um, so let's go back to this script and i'll show you how you do that so what you can do in powershell is import a csv file just like this this with the one-liner and of course we can even make it shorter you can also do this of course replace this all by that yeah it's possible as well that you like and then we're going to iterate through each item in this csv file that's current that's then an object and then we can actually do the same that we did here but then yeah on multiple systems right in a loop but let's a look at this code now. So I'll put the debugger here on the first item in the loop. I'll start the code. And the debugger started. So let me give some yeah, real estate here. So here we are on the on the each on the first line. So let's press F10. Press F10 and let's investigate. So we have item here. And I hover on it, and in item you see a host name, a username, a password, and a command to run. Right? You see that? And that's exactly this first line, of course, right? That's the first one. That's an object now. And then the second one gets an object as well in the next iteration here. Uh, but um, for now, we have uh, this one, this guy to work with. So basically, we do exactly the same as you saw before. So first, we convert that plain text password again to a secure string. We do that here. Then we create that credential object in memory again. Then we create a session to that remote server over port 22 with that credential that we just created here before. So we hand that over. And then over that connection, we execute the command. And which command? This item dot command to run, right? That comes now from here, this command to run, right? If we look in item here, item dot command to run, right? ls forward slash. Um, so if we then press next, we have executed that command and saved the result in O. And now inside of O, we have some results again. And I'll show that here on the screen. You see here the directory listing again, right? As you expected. And um, let's move on with the script. Let's run it for all systems now. So now it's connected to all those systems and did everything we specified in the CSV file. So the first one was the directory listing. You saw that already, right here, the directory listing. Directory listing there. The second one is an echo command. Don't know why it's doing this. This is an echo command, the second one. So, uh, and that's yes, right? It corresponds to this. This one, the third one, runs a hostname. So that's on this server, on this remote server, it runs the hostname. And that is the hostname indeed. That's correct. 
and then uh, the fourth one we get the IP address IP as you can see so that works as well we get that here and on the last one we run who am I host name and a cut of a command and we see that here and the output of this file you don't see because I don't think this file exists on the server so that makes sense that it doesn't return anything there um let me think yeah I cleaned up the code a little bit some more real estate let's clear the screen here let's go to the directory where this script is and uh, I don't know out of my head to be fair so uh, I'm going to get some help here uh, I know this does exist then my explorer opens here and I know in which folder it lives and then I can change to the directory here for now I could do a listing and now we can run that that script again from this folder and let's see what we get okay you see this one the first one directory listing second one was yes third one right exactly the same as we had here and imagine we, we're doing something else here uh, I'll remove this last command by the way uh, echo yes becomes echo no okay and the directory listing we're now going to do on the home directory okay so that will be a small list i think i think there's only one folder there uh so we do slash bin i guess uh, should get something back there um so let's let's change this let's change the script also a little bit so you can examine the output a little bit better and how we can do that for instance we can do a start sleep here if you like start sleep minus uh, seconds we do this time and let's sleep for five seconds and just uh, or three seconds should be fine and then you can sort of examine the output per per item okay so run it again we run the same script again so that you see the bin that was the directory listing of the bin that you saw then now we start with the second one no you see that no on the screen third one is the host name again the fourth one is the IP address. You see all the information about the IP address on that system. And the five, fifth one is the who am I and the hostname command. That's what you see here. Yeah, use your imagination. Of course, you can have some longer commands, perhaps concatenated commands like I do here or, or several on one line, you know. You can also run commands like this, you know. I think you can append them. You can add multi-threading like this even in uh, commands. That's besides the, the scope of this uh, demo. Um, let me verify one more thing. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't need to make it any more complicated because it's not it's not very complicated. It's very easy. I showed all the steps, importing the modules, finding the modules and such and such. And we have a loop here. So uh, yeah, that was it. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye.